Your website sucks, and you know that because you're not getting enough sales. And if you don't fix it right now, your competition is going to brutally destroy you. <laughs> I can't say that. If you have to write your own landing pages or the homepage of your website or your product page, if you haven't done this before, you don't know where to start. So you sit down at your computer, you stare at that little cursor that's blinking at you and you think, okay, I gotta write this page. Now you may go to a competitor's site, you may go to a site you like and just kind of copy what they're doing and then change a few adjectives here and a few words there, but that's not gonna help you win over your customers. That's not gonna help you generate leads. That's not gonna help you build sales or build a brand or crush the competition. All you're going to do by copying what other people are doing and changing a few words is being an imitation version, a cheap version of what good people are doing, or maybe you're even copying terrible people. So now you're a cheap version of what a terrible person is doing. You don't wanna do that. Here's what you wanna do. You wanna sit down at your computer and you wanna say, who am I? You're not the business owner, you're not the marketer, you're not the salesperson, you're not the entrepreneur, you are the customer. Who am I? You have to start with the target. You have to start with understanding who your ideal customers are. You have to start with the people who are gonna buy from you or learn from you or work through your page. So who am I? What do I want? What am I looking for? How did I get here? What did I search or what did I see that brought me here? How much do I know about you? These are questions where you can sit down and do a really quick mind experiment to try and figure out how to get into the place of that person. So here's like a really standard target. Let's say we're targeting moms. So we're targeting women. Let's say that they're 30 to 45 years old and they happen to be on Facebook. This is like a really common target audience. But are these moms who are on mat leave? So they have really small children and they're working. Or are these moms with older kids who happen to be at home? Are these women who are in their early 30s? Or are these women into their 40s? What do they care about as they're finding you, as what they're looking for and as they land on the page? Are they just doing research or do they wanna buy something right away? As you get into the target, as you start to understand who these people are and what they're looking for and what brought them there, you can start to create a story. And that story is what you're gonna write all your copy and build your page off of. So step number one is to get into the mind of the people that you're trying to communicate to. Step number two is to now figure out what it is that they need and they want. So you've just asked all those questions. Now we gotta start thinking, okay, they're at a research phase. They probably want information. If they want information, you're not gonna ask them to buy something. It's too early. But if they're looking for research and they're not sure what to do next, then you give them the information for the research and then you ask them to take the next step with a call to action. Here's a totally different target. Let's say that they land on that page, but they're ready to buy. If someone types in, I want red Nike shoes size eight, the person is probably pretty deep into the process and wants to buy red Nike shoes in size eight. If they typed in, what are the best shoes to use for soccer? then you know, they're at a research phase. It's a little bit higher in the process. So first step is taken care of. Second step, we're figuring out what it is that they're looking for. And now, 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 we're actually ready to start thinking about what we may write on the page. So most people struggle because they sit down and they look at that, bl that blinking cursor and they say, what do I write? But they haven't done any of these other steps. The third step is to now start to wireframe the page. Now, we're not even at the writing phase yet. All we're doing is figuring out on the page, section by section, what needs to be on that page. So let's talk about a really standard landing page. The top of the page, of course, will have like a logo and it might have contact details or it might have a slight menu. If it's a home page, it's certainly gonna have those things. The next thing down is that top banner. So it's like the magazine cover. It's like above the fold in the newspaper. It's the first thing that people see. And when they land on that part of the page, you need a statement. We typically call it like a headline or an H1. You need some context. We would typically call this like an H2. And then you need an image or something that will help people understand that they are in the right place. If they saw a Facebook ad from you, and they landed on the page, what they see there should match what that ad is so that way there's continuity from what they've seen to where they are so they go, ah, oh, I'm in the right place. If you're a roofing company and someone is looking to try and get a roofing company to help them, well, when I land there, 
does it at least help me understand that I'm in the right place and this is a roofing company. This is why I don't need to see your trucks. This is why I don't need to see your crew. This is why I don't need to see the people wearing the shirts. I need to know like, am I in the right place? Are you a roofing company? Are you the right type of roofing company? Commercial versus large scale versus uh, homes versus cedar shakes or cottages or whatever it is. I don't know that much about roofing. Are you the right type of roofing company to me? And you can communicate that to me in terms of what you write for the headline, the context that you add, and then the photo that is there, the image, that what it looks like. All we're doing at the wireframing stage is deciding, okay, we need a section that has a headline and a subheadline and an image. We haven't even written anything yet. What is the next thing that we need to communicate or say or show? So below the banner, what is the next thing we need to do? Do we need to add credibility to say, not only are you in the right place, but we know what we're talking about. Do we need to provide more information? Not only are you in the right place, but here are the three things that people typically want to know about or ask. Do we need to segment people off? So it's the roofing company. I'm in the right place. But are you a residential client or are you a professional or are you a commercial person? That can help segment people out. Do we need to talk about the different types of shingles? Are you a cheap client who has no money but just wants to fix a, a leaky roof? Or are you someone, a higher end client who's looking for cedar shakes because they look great in the last 50 years? Or are you looking for steel or whatever? I don't know, Tesla powered shingles or something, like who knows? The question you have to ask yourself is when I'm on the next section, what is it that the visitor needs to see or hear? What is it that they need from you? Do they want more information? Do they just want you to tell them what they have to do? Do they need to know more about you? Do they need more credibility? Do you want to talk about press? What is it that they need? And then what you're going to do is work your way down the page, literally on a piece of paper or on your desktop in boxes. And you're going to say, the top of the box has a headline and a subheadline and a photo. The next section might be three things. The next section from that might be like download a white paper as a soft call to action. Then below that, it might be a little bit about us, or it might be, uh, you know, here are some FAQs, or it might be uh, uh, clients we've worked with for credibility or testimonials, or you can catch us at our event. There are all these different places you can take someone and what you have to decide is where everything goes. Now, I just threw a lot at you. So you might say, I, I, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to, I, I don't know what I should say and shouldn't say. This is the fourth step then. It's as you lay everything down on the page, be really, really comfortable moving things around and throwing things away. Every page has a purpose. And that purpose is to push people forward to the next step. That's it. So if I land on a landing page and the next step is to call, to get a quote or to learn more or to set up a meeting, the only thing the page has to do is encourage people to call. It does not have to explain everything about you, give away all of the information, try and close the sale, try and do everything. The only thing that page has to do is get the call. So what do I need to say or do to get the call? And then a secondary call to action or a secondary win is always great. Maybe I'm not ready to call. So maybe I'm at a point though where I wanna read your blog post I want to download an article. I want to sign up for your email newsletter. I want to speak to someone in customer service, but not sales, because customer service might seem uh, softer. They're not here to. They're not here to sell me. They're here to help answer my questions. That's a great secondary action. So every page has to move people through the process, and then you have to ask, what is the main thing I want them to do, and what is the? Mm, they're not going to do the main thing, but at least they're going to do this thing. And then that's it. Deciding on where things are, moving them around and throwing things out is the next step because people will only take one action or maybe there's that, oh, thank you, there's a second thing you can do for me. Do not try to give them four, five, six, seven things to do thinking, oh, they will find it, they will look for it. They're not going to. People are really, really lazy and they are not going to look for your information. If you have a question like, hey, I want to find a pair of red Nike shoes and you land on a page and it takes you to like, hey, select a brand. <sighs> okay, Nike, great. Oh, select a shoe. I don't know what shoe I want yet. I want red shoes. I don't, I don't know what type of shoe I want. Done, I'm out of here. Now, I'm a pretty smart guy. 
can I go to the brand Nike? Can I then go to the type of shoe and look to see if that shoe is available in red? Of course I can. Will I do it? Not a chance in hell. It's too much work. I'm not gonna do it. I want an easy answer. <laughs> That's what people want from you. So now, step five, we are finally ready to write. At this point, it shouldn't be as hard as staring at that blank screen because now we know who our people are, right? We have that story. We know what it is they're looking for. We've gone ahead and sectioned out the possible things. We've then moved the sections around thinking about the one or two things we want them to do. And now it just comes down to filling in the blanks. It's like a Mad Lib. My son has now, uh, he's 10. <laughs> Somehow my wife introduced him to Mad Libs. And so he walks around asking people for vowels and for nouns and for adjectives. And for some reason, butts always happens to be one of the things. He's obsessed with butts, but now he just fills in the blanks and he comes up with this great story. That's it. You now have these blanks. You need a headline. What should the headline say? Well, it should tie into whoever you're speaking to and whatever it is they're looking for. If someone is looking to learn about your service because they're at a research phase, that headline should probably have the service in it. It should probably explain that if I read this page, I'm going to learn about the service and it should be in your tone. And the subheadline, the, the H2, will probably have more context. The photo behind it, which isn't writing, this is now creative, but the photo behind it will help with that. And the next section down will help me through this journey. Write everything out, section by section by section, and then take a step back and look at it and say, does it make sense if I work from top to bottom? And does it make sense if I just scroll? Heat mapping shows from tracking people's eyes that no one reads. I mean, thinking about this like you're gonna start at the top and work your way to the bottom, or you're gonna start at the home page and then work your way through the site, that doesn't happen. They start at the top and they work their way down and they look at the first few words of every single headline or bullet and they go like this down the page. So first, does it make sense if I happen to read it from top to bottom? Very few people will. Second, does it make sense if I just kind of glance at things? Now you can get upset. You can say, I've done all this work writing everything and no one is even gonna read it. Exactly. Don't fight it. <laughs> like that's, that's how this works. But if you work through these five things and you take the time to do it really, really well, you will have a better page. You will actually increase your leads, you'll increase your sales, and you will be able to grow your business. Let me know what you think of this. Let me know if you have a different process for working through page writing or if this is just blown your mind. And remember, like always, you have to think big, you have to be bold, say yes. <laughs> I can't say that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>